And I'm coming at this from like Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct. I'm thinking these guys are gonna have crazy names. It's like, oh my god, it's Boomerang Raid. And it's like, no, his name is, uh, his name is Kyle. <laughs> All right, next is Ibuki. Let's beat up a Japanese girl, why not? The fun thing about Street Fighter 2 is you can beat up somebody of every ethnicity. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Sounds One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into Street Fighter 3 colon third strike colon fight for the future. This is the third th Street Fighter 3 game in the franchise. God, this is a tongue twister. Street Fighter 3 follows Street Fighter 3 colon second impact, which follows Street Fighter 3. <laughs> I have never understood why the Street Fighter games don't just have straight up sequels, but this is the third Street Fighter 3 game out there. Apparently it's pretty good, so let's give it a shot. I mean, it made its way into the thousand one games just play before you die book. It started as an arcade game, so we should probably play arcade mode. Um, but then it was ported to Dreamcast, Xbox, PS2, uh, all the si big systems of the time. Oh my god, you can play as just like, literally, somebody with no skin or face or anything, that's kind of cool. Uh, this game, by the way, reintroduced Chun-Li, so I guess she was missing from Street Fighter 3 2. Uh, but she might have been in Street Fighter 3 1, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm looking for Ken and Ryu. Oh, there's, there's, uh... Ryu, and there's Ken. Let's start as Ryu, because he's familiar. So we have the Shinku Hadouken, which is down forward, down forward punch. Okay. Is he showing us the moves? That's cool. Uh, the Shin Shuriken, or the Denjin Hadouken. Okay. Oh, those are different modes. Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing now. Now I'm officially worried that we're going to be really lost here. Um, oh, this is cool. So for the first stage, you actually get to select your fighter. That's kind of a neat, uh, spin on, uh, on fighting games. Let's go with this guy, I guess. Let's fight the American guy. Boomerang Raid, dude. Oh, Alex is his name. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming at this from, like, Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct. I'm thinking these guys are gonna have crazy names. It's like, oh my god, it's Boomerang Raid! And it's like, no, his name is, uh, his name is Kyle, or Alex, or whatever. Okay, the uh, the animation here is actually pretty tight. Oh, we there we did it, there we did it, there we did it. More Hadoukens, keep them up. Oh my God, you you know what? Um, every time we play a fighting game, I always say the exact same thing. I say I don't really play fighting games. I always button mash, blah blah blah. And people are always like, Jay, just learn the moves. It's not that hard. But like, I will tell you, even knowing how to do a Hadouken with Ryu. Or Ryu here, however you pronounce his name. Um, my fingers just, I, I'm, I'm just not, I just don't have that fighting finesse. I don't know. I've never been able to do the moves very, very uh, consistently. The only, the only fighting game I've ever been good at is the first Mortal Kombat. And we just lost in the first fight there. Like I ripped off it. Look, that guy's jacked, man. Jeez. Ripped off his bandana and held it because he was so, oh yeah, you like that? That was an elbow to the face. Here, let's let's try the old tried and true gaming day, J strategy of just button mashing. See, I did a Hadouken there while I was button mashing. The Hadoukens happen almost as frequently when I, I'm not intentionally trying to do them as when I am. So, uh, it tells you something about my skill level. So yeah, I mean, I I'll well, start this video by apologizing to fans of the fighting genre, and uh, let you know that if you're looking for uh, you know. Looking for a, a good, uh, a good fight. You, uh, you're not in the right place. We're, we're here to have fun. We're here to have fun. Oh, yeah, I did two punches to him in the air. That was pretty cool. Um, we're gonna try a variety of characters here. And see how it goes, but, um, yeah. Now, it's interesting this game came out for Dreamcast, PS2, and Xbox. Because, frankly, in my mind... Uh, when the Dreamcast came out, I don't remember Xbox or PS2 even really being out at the time. PS2 might have been, uh, but I don't really remember it. And it's funny to think of the Dreamcast as a contemporary of both of those systems, because in my mind, the Dreamcast came out, uh, Sega went out of business in the console market, and then later on, PS2 and Xbox, which both seem more advanced to me than Dreamcast, 
uh, came out. Um, now, I don't know which system is actually the most advanced. Dreamcast might trounce them all. Although, one benefit Xbox always had is that it had a hard drive, um, which opened up sort of games that, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the other systems just couldn't handle. I mean, the PS2 did have an Xbox attachment if you bought the LAN adapter, but it wasn't standard. Uh, but the Xbox just had standard ability to save files and all sorts of stuff. Um, anyway, we just totally got demolished there. We're going to let this timer run down, and we are going to change to a different fighter. We're going to see what other kind of fighters there are. Maybe there will be one that suits my play style. That's kind of what I hope. Um, I'm playing this with a Dreamcast controller, of course, and can I just say, I, I must have commented on other videos, but why why does the Dreamcast controller cord come come out of the bottom of the controller? Have we ever gotten a straight answer from Sega about why that's the case? I mean, if you've ever held a Dreamcast controller, the first thing you'll notice is that the cable, the cord that comes out of it, rather than coming out of the top of the controller, like every controller in the existence of video games, it comes out the bottom. Which I, I, I to this day, don't understand why it's like that. And the other thing is like, what's weird is it's not like it comes out the bottom and it's like this stylistic choice. And they're like, no, no, the bottom is superior. It's like they know, well, let's play this, this guy. He's like a detective. It's like they know they messed up because there's even a little uh, divot in the uh, plastic near the top where you can fold the cord up, put it in the divot, and then it's it pretends like the cord is coming out of the top of the controller. I don't know. It's bizarre. Frankly, now that I'm talking about it, the only other controller I can think of where the cord comes out of the bottom is the Wii's uh, Pro Controller, which was supposed to plug into the Wii Mote which I have always also thought was really <laughs> ridiculous. Um, yeah, that, that, was, that was one feature of the Wii that, uh, that I always was like, what? Seriously? So the Wiimote w definitely was an inventive controller and it opened up all sorts of other interesting gameplay elements. But then when they released like a Wii Pro controller, it was like, oh, now you can play with like a normal Super Nintendo style controller. But you had to plug it into a Wiimote. I don't know if you've ever uh, played a video game with your cell phone sitting on your crotch, but that's pretty much the experience of playing uh, with the, the Wii Pro Controller while the Wii Mode is just sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> like, you gotta put it somewhere because the cord's not even that long. You know, it's, it's like a, a two-foot cord, so it has to sit somewhere on your body. And you don't want to put it beside you because then someone will come sit on it and stuff. And then plus, if you move your, your Pro Controller too much, then, um, then uh, you know, you might you might yank on the Wii, the Wii Mote and it might like fall onto the floor or something. So it's like it has to stay somewhere near you. And like, where are you gonna put it, <laughs> right? It's just it's it's odd design choices. Odd design. Maybe these choices make a lot more sense in Japan. Maybe in Japan, like first of all, plugging one controller into another makes more sense. Um, oh my God, we lost you to timeout. What am I, like a detective robot? What? I don't understand what my character is. Um, oh! Oh my god, look at him go! Missed all of those attacks, and then he got me. But nonetheless, it felt good to do those moves. I'm trying out these different common button combos, but... Oh, there we go! I missed every single one of those! Yep. Yep. So, anyway, yeah, the Dreamcast, I don't know what's going on with the controller. Somebody fill me in. Sega must have done an interview sometimes where they were like, well, you know, intense studies with the Japanese public revealed that wires coming out the bottom of a controller enhance the gaming experience or something. Or it's just like literally like, yo, we, we effed up. We done screwed up, man. We kind of released the controller, didn't realize we had it coming out the bottom, and it was already in production. It was way too late. Like, I think Nintendo's explanation for why I gotta plug the Wii mode into the Pro Controller is they were just too cheap to include, uh... to include the, like, wired uh, radio technology for the uh, Pro Controller to directly communicate with the Wii. So basically, the Pro Controller just piggybacks off the Wii mode's ability to communicate with the Wii. Which... 
You know what? Again, if you want to do that, they should have had two kind of Wii, Wii Pro controllers. They should have had the cheaper, you know, Wii one. Cheaper, cheap Wii Pro, let's call it. And then they should have had, like, Wii Pro Pro. The more expensive... Make it 10 or $15 more expensive and give me the option to own a Wii controller that doesn't have to plug into a Wii mode. <laughs> you know, like... How about that? There's, there's a solution. I don't know. Anyway, let's, uh... <laughs> We've lost our first two. I think it's like I'm losing these fights. It's putting me in like a sour mood. I'm like, let's rag on Sega Nintendo. Let's just tear him a new one while I get dominated in this game. Uh, okay, no Chun Li. I want. I definitely want to play as this guy's name is Twelve. That's crazy. His move is X N D D L. We'll give it a shot, man. Oh, we get to fight Chun-Li. No, we'll save Chun-Li. I want to play as her. I don't want to fight against her. We're getting a nice little showcase of the fighters here. So imagine if you were a big fan of Street Fighter. Oh, this guy's like made of goo. That's cool. Imagine if you're a big fan of Street Fighter, you might, you know, have really enjoyed this game back in the day. But I'm also kind of like wondering, like, I know people like really like, uh, you know, the variants of games that they like. Like, I know in the Smash Brothers community, like, people love Smash Brothers Melee, and the pros did not care for Brawl at all. So it's like, even when Brawl was out, people were still playing Melee. And I think the latest... I think the latest, um... I can, like, send spikes to the ground. That's cool. I think the latest Smash Brothers people tend to like, but I know, like, people get fixated on different uh, versions. Because fighting games... Oh, yeah, that was a cool move. Fighting games are not just, like, a normal kind of video game where it's like, oh, this is the next one in the franchise. It's just more advanced and has more stuff. It's like, no, like, fighting games are, like, really precisely tuned uh, engines. And if you mess with the tuning and you mess with the characters, you mess with the balance, sometimes it's better, but sometimes you can just, like... It's like a house of cards. You can knock the whole thing down. Oh, my God. Kill him! Did we lose? We lost! Unbelievable! Oh god! This is a fr how are we so bad at this? Okay, we're gonna turn off arcade mode after this and try something else because we are sucking, man. I thought we had that one. I was like, oh yeah, one. I, if I sneeze on him, he'll die. And also somehow we've got him in the corner, but he's beating us up, which doesn't make any sense. Normally you get guys into a corner and you just pummel them. But anyway, I'd be curious to know if anyone... So I, I know uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting Edition colon the ultimate fight um, of all the great warriors is the version of the game that everybody loves. Um, you know, it, it's sort of the, the like the timeless, you know, if you're talking about Street Fighter, you know, like, like if we want to talk about Street Fighter games that should be in this thousand one games, just play before you die book. Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting Edition, King of All the Warriors, who will ever come and ever will be, is definitely the version of the game that everybody loves. Everybody, that, that 100% should be in the book. Man, we just got our butt handed to us. Um, I feel like every Street Fighter after that is like a mixed bag of like maybe. You know, like, maybe it should be in there. Um, I think Street Fighter 4 or 5 is pretty big in the Evo scene, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't really follow the Evo scene too much, so I'm just kind of going by my second-hand impressions of it. But I know that there's, like, a modern Street Fighter that people really enjoy, but these sort of ones in between, in between Street Fighter 2 and whatever the current big one is, um, it's really hard for me to say, like... As, as someone who didn't play Street Fighter, um, does, you know, is this a great game or not? I mean, I'm sure it's a good fighting game, but just in the... Like, it certainly doesn't have the legacy of Street Fighter 2. And then the question is, does it have, like, the amazing replayability and funness of Street Fighter 2? So, um, oh, we selected two-player. Whoops, I didn't even mean to do that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that either. Okay, I guess we're playing as Q... Didn't mean to select this character. I guess we're gonna actually get a practice mode because we're playing versus and there is no second player. I don't even have a second controller out. So we just have to wait for these menus to time out. Which is pretty funny. 
I would have picked a different character, um, other than the guy that we've already seen, but I guess we'll get to practice his move. So, like, it's like a down half circle, down half circle, and then punch. Uh, does something. Oh my god. <laughs> the second player can't even pick his handicap and there's no time limit. Alright, we legit have to reset the system. Alright, while we were rebooting the system, I did look it up, and it said that this game is considered one of the greatest fighting games of all time. So there you go. Uh, if Even if you personally enjoy Street Fighter 2 the best, this one is one of the best ones ever released. So there you go. Anyway, let's see if there's a uh, difficulty menu here. Game option. Difficulty. Oh, let's turn that, that baby. Oh, no. <laughs> All the way down to L, uh, which I assume is low. Um, time limit is fine. Rounds three is fine. Damage level is fine where it is. Handicap versus whatever. Oh, you can actually. Oh. Oh, you can actually turn. Why isn't that when you go to select versus? Why doesn't this say human versus human and human versus CP? Why does it make you like dig into the game options to get that? That's kind of a odd place to put that. Anyway, that's uh, that's cool. Um, so we could try a versus mode, but I mean, I guess if it's human versus computers, what's the difference between that and just selecting arcade? Um, so let's go ahead and select Chun Li. So Chun-Li, Ryu, and Ken are the only characters that I really recognize from the original Street Fighter 2 that have made their way uh, here. Oh, we can fight a guy named Sean or like a necrotic beast from Russia. Uh, let's go with Sean. I wonder if he knows Blanca. They're both from Brazil, right? I was kind of hoping Blanca would be in this game, but I guess he's too cheap. They finally clued into the fact that Blanca is just like... Oh yeah, okay, we can do her super kicks. That's something. Oh, God, but... Wait, is this... I thought I turned the difficulty down. <laughs> What's going on here, computer? Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, we can do a couple of moves. I'm not totally... Oh yeah, we did it into his back. Oh yeah. Oh, wait, he threw a beach ball at me. I didn't know we were allowed to bring beach balls into the arena, buddy. Jesus. We're, we're, gonna, we're totally gonna lose on the easiest difficulty, aren't we? Yeah, go down. Stay in the corner. Get pummeled. Get pummeled. Come on, kill him. No. <laughs> now you may look at the health bar today and be like, Jay, calm down. You clearly had that in the bag, but never underestimate my ability to screw it up. Oh, he just like phased through reality with that kick. Oh yeah, get in the corner. Get back in the corner, buddy. Oh, don't. Punch me in the lower pelvis. I don't think so. Oh, you dick. Oh, yeah! Okay, how did that not kill him? How did that not kill him? Has this ever been explained in the, uh, in the, uh, sort of Street Fighter 2 mythos? What is a Hadouken, actually? Like, what kind of energy are you summoning? Is it electromagnetic in, in nature? Is it, like, chi energy? Is it like the souls of your defeated opponents? Like, what are you actually summoning with a Hadouken? I think we all just take for granted that Hadouken's a Hadouken. But like, what is it actually? It, it seems to be like an electromagnetic interference of some kind, I would say. Um, D plus? We're flunking. I mean, I guess it's technically not an F, but that is not a good grade. Let's go with Dudley. He looks stupid. <laughs> What is he supposed to be? Like a fancy British butler? That is so funny. It's funny because it kind of is a British stereotype to sort of have like a fancy mustache. Or no, it, it's not even. It's like that's like an American strongman. Like you, you think of those old posters from the 30s where like dudes were lifting like barbells that were actually circular. And it's like that's what this guy looks like. He doesn't look British. If he was British, he should have tea and crumpets. And like the queen, like a monarchy. Oh, not have boxing gloves. Boxing gloves are are box. Is boxing American? Who invented boxing? I mean, I guess. 
I guess boxing is just punching people, punching each other in the face, so. I don't know if anyone needed to invent that, but. All right, tur turns out turning the difficulty from 30% to 10% is how I actually can defeat an opponent or two. I like how the game does start like on an easier difficulty, but it was like way too hard for me. Come on, do your super move. Oh, yes. Okay, I think I kind of know how to do that super move, but I still don't know how to do her like Shriyuken Hadouken thing consistently. I'm kind of trying to figure it out. Oh no! Oh, we punch- we- you can kick people out of that? That's kind of a crap super move if people can just like- Like I just- it was like the, the tail end of one of my kicks he just caught. He caught a heal. And he went down. Down you go, buddy. Go back to Hogwarts, Dudley. There's like British people on the horses behind us in the intersection like, Are you done yet, chops? We need to get to the queen! All right, next is Ibuki. Let's beat up a Japanese girl, why not? The fun thing about Street Fighter 2 is you can beat up somebody of every ethnicity. <laughs> Isn't that why people like the game? It's, uh, it, it's very, uh, you know, universal like that. It doesn't discriminate. You can beat up somebody of every race, every gender, every color. Oh, good, beat them all up. That's what the creators of Street Fighter say. Creators of Street Fighter were all about beating up. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like beating this joke into the ground, but we'll move on. Anyway, we're actually doing pretty good. Who's the boss of Street Fighter? Oh, it's M. Bison, that's right. I was gonna, I was literally about to say, does Street Fighter have a boss? Is there a boss? But yeah, it's, it's definitely M. Bison. Boom, all oh, that kick like exploded her face. I had C4 in the, the boot of my boot on that one. Yeah, get in the corner. I like that throw move, that's actually kinda cool. Okay. And super move. And I'm trying to do it. Yes, oh, okay. I, I think I've kind of figured it out. I think it's that uh, when you start up, it's like the down forward half circle twice and then a punch. That's how you do your super move. I think one of the things about fighting games for me is that they tend to be very forgiving, it seems. Well, well, certain fighting games are more forgiving than others. Oh my God, we're about to die. Come on. Oh no, no, oh, we dodged that. Oh my God, if we had dodged that and actually killed her, how cool would that have been? Um, We dodged it though, that's something. Oh God, get out of here with your little face punches. Oh yeah. Okay. Super move, yes. Wow, I did that really fast. The second I decided to do it, she did it. I mean, I, w I will I will completely cop to the fact that I'm still sort of 70% button mashing, but within the button mashes, within the frantic, frenetic press of buttons, I'm sometimes trying to do like intentional things. And I'm just gonna, t every move she does, I'm gonna take credit as that being intentional, even though like some of them are happening by accident. Oh no, she got us with a kick to the sky. Wait, and she has a boyfriend? No? Ibuki? I have to change outfits, I'm out of bombs. All right, let's continue and let's pick another character here. Let's go, this guy, Remy. This guy just looks like, he's just a guy who looks sad, you know? Like, I don't know what his deal is. This guy looks like an orc. Oh, look at this girl, that's kind of cool. Yeah, let's be the orc. And we'll leave that super move the same because it's the only one that I've been able to do with some consistency. Ooh, and let's fight Remy. You're going down, goth kid. You're fighting an orc. Your dreams have come true. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm missing an arm. Wait, what? Wait, time out. I forgot both arms. Oh god, ew, what's happening? Is this sort of like the Blanca character? This is like Blanca and Dalsum got morphed together in a David Cronenberg teleporter a la the fly and ended up as this weird creature. Dalsim and Blanca, can he, can he turn electrical? 
Does any character in this game turn electrical like Blanca? That would be pretty cool. Like the legacy moves. Die, die. Okay, do the move. Do the move. Super move time. Super move time. Okay, I can't get it to go off. I was much better at it with uh, Chun Li. Oh, God. Don't kill the orc. We've been through so much as a species discriminated against in Middle Earth. Just because I'm an orc doesn't make me a bad guy. Like Wreck It Ralph. Just because I'm bad guy doesn't make me a bad guy. Oh, God. Every game needs a villain. I'm just playing a role. Oh, God. Okay. That's something. He's doing something. Hey, you know who else is missing? Is E Honda. The uh, famed sumo wrestler and heir to the on Honda uh, motor fortune. Guess he got tired of beating up randos and decided to just uh, live off his inheritance. Which is what I would do if I had an inheritance. And <laughs> look at the life I live when I can't live, you know, when I need to have a job and stuff. I'm like playing video games and YouTube and all this stuff. Imagine what, imagine what Jay's life would look like here if I didn't actually have to work for a living. It would actually not be a good scene. I would, I would devolve into a series of, uh, what is this guy? Yeah. I would lose all social contact. I would never leave the house or just play games all the time. It'd be bad. The fact that I actually need to make money in my life is uh, <laughs> what, what makes me leave the house and get up in the morning at a reasonable time. No oh, mercy. No oh, yikes. Some of these uh, animated characters look a little CG to me, actually. Which is interesting. Like, my character here, like, I know all the characters are animated, but the way she stands and moves in her, like, idle animation, she looks a little 3D. Kind of interesting. Oh, we're getting owned, man. Okay, I think if we lose this fight, then we have we have successfully seen and tried Street Fighter 3. But I, I'm not just going to phone it in. I, I want to try and beat this guy. But it, I don't know if this character here is the best one to do it. Oh, well, getting some moves in, though. Come on! <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. I don't even know what the block button is. I'm guessing it's one of the triggers. I actually haven't experimented much with that. Come on. This would be such a redemption if I could somehow kill him with the health bar that I've got. No. But of course it didn't work. Down she goes. <laughs> See, like, doesn't this look a little computer animated? Or like idle animation right there? It's a little computer animated to me. We're definitely losing this fight. Oh. She does a lot of her fighting with her legs. She even, like, throws people with her legs. Doesn't want to, like, mess up her... her gentle hands that have never known a hard day's work in their life. Oh, we are definitely losing this fight. Do a super move! Super move! Super move him! Super move him! No, don't die! Don't die! Oh, super move, super move! He's in the corner! Super move! I can't get it to go off! Oh, come on. Oh, uh, get him. Oh, KO. She got to me. She got to me. Winner Yang, don't assume the same patterns. You use on others will work on me. Well, folks, we have successfully had our butt handed to us in Street Fighter 3 colon third strike. Um, this is one of the games in the book of thousand one video games just play before you die. It is considered one of the best fighting games of all time. So if you are a fighting game aficionado, I sincerely apologize for making you watch that horrible display of ineptability that you just saw, aka uh, my gameplay. Uh, for the non-fighting game fans, uh, you know, if you are looking for to get into a fighting game, again, this one is considered really good. Might be one you want to check out. Um, you know, as far as this being a game you must play before you die, I think, again, it's it's going to play well in certain circles. So, like, for me, who likes uh, platformers, 
shooters, strategy games, even puzzle games to some degree. Um, and who was never sort of big into things like, you know, racing games or fighting games and stuff like that. It's a little outside my wheelhouse. So um, it, it felt like a fine enough fighting game. Um, and it did feel actually like a significant improvement over Street Fighter 2 in the sense of like it felt more advanced. Um, but it was hard for me to discern. And with my, uh, you know, inexperienced eyeballs and fingertips feel the difference for myself. So... Again, I think this will play better for uh, fighting aficionados or people who want to get into fighting games. But if you are looking, you are looking, apparently one of the best fighting games of all time. So yeah, what do you guys think of this game? You guys be the judge at the end of the day. Is this one of the best fighting games of all time? If so, let me know why. If not, let me know why. Go ahead and sound off in the comments down below. And as always, whatever you think of the game, hopefully today you had some fun. And watching me fail gave you a chuckle. If it did, don't forget to like the video and all that stuff. And other than that, I will catch you in the next one. So until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves. And, uh, peace. Oh, don't punch me in the lower pelvis.